Hi debaters, I'm Maggie Berthew, an instructor in the Spartan Scholars at Michigan State, and this is a series of videos to introduce you to the 2020-2021 criminal justice reform topic. This video in particular is focused on the words in the resolution and how they will shape debates this year. Companion videos and activities will introduce you to major AF and NEG arguments and teach the history of criminal justice and criminal justice reform in the United States. So let's get started. This year's resolution is resolved. The United States federal government should enact substantial criminal justice reform in the United States in one or more of the following, forensic science, policing, sentencing. The first thing I do when analyzing a new topic is to break it up into component phrases. Then it's time to research what those phrases are likely to mean in context to establish likely AF and NEG ground and hypothesize about the main topicality debates this year. This year's SDI topicality file was created by Bruce Nager. I'll be showing a number of his cards here. It will also be useful for you to review additional evidence in the file after this video. When I broke up this year's resolution into pieces, I got this. Resolved, the United States federal government should enact substantial criminal justice reform in the United States in one or more of the following, forensic science, policing, sentencing. We'll look at each of these chunks separately. Resolved is the word that starts nearly all debate topics. It comes from government, and in our context, it really means here comes the topic. The United States federal government should is another phrase you see in almost all recent policy debate resolutions. It tells us the actor for the topic. While you certainly may have debates about this part of the resolution, today I'm going to focus on the words that follow. An act is an interesting word. If you look it up in a dictionary, you'll probably get something like to make into law or to make into an act or statute. The most common understandings of an act generally mean that we're looking at a statute or law passed by a legislative body. In the case of the federal government, that means Congress. Negative debaters are likely to use this type of definition to say that the plan has to be done by Congress. Courts and agencies cannot enact policy. Here's an example of a card that a negative team might use against a court sector. And here's one that a neg team could use against action by an executive agency, like the Department of Justice or the FBI. If you look at the pre-institute topicality file from the SDI, you can see other examples. Does this mean that a topical plan can only be Congress and negatives don't have to worry about courts or executive acts this year? Not so fast. There are other definitions that say, well, an act usually means Congress. There's no reason the courts can't enact policy. Here's an example of one of those cards. And again, there are more examples in the file. So where does that leave debaters? Debating. When thinking about the resolution before the year, know that if you choose to read a courts or executive AF, you'll need to be ready to debate TNACT, maybe pretty often. For the negative, at this point I'd say that while preparing TNACT is useful, I don't think it's absolute enough to say that you won't have to prepare other strategies against courts and executive AFs, which are likely to be a significant part of the topic. The next word to consider is substantial. Substantial is an adjective that modifies the noun or noun phrase after it in this case, criminal justice reform. It's a very common word in debate resolutions to force the act to be bigger. But depending on the noun or noun phrase that follows, it may be more or less useful to debaters in setting bounds for the topic. In general, the negative loves it when the phrase substantial X is something quantifiable because it's much easier to assess whether the affirmative meets it or not. The affirmative likes it when substantial just means important. Every AF is happy to tell you why their plan is important. In this case, substantial will be more or less useful depending on how you define criminal justice reform, so it's helpful to consider these terms together. In the abstract, substantial reform is not something that is as easily defined or quantified as something like a substantial increase in funding or a substantial reduction in deaths. So, now we've reached the heart of the topic, criminal justice reform. If your family asked what you were debating this year, that's probably what you told them, and it's important to understand what these words mean in context. In the abstract, criminal justice reform means changes to the system of criminal justice. But when looking at this resolution, there are three main questions about the phrase criminal justice reform, and each generates a topicality debate. 
First, is criminal justice reform a bi-directional term? Second, does the word reform include abolition? And third, does criminal justice reform include civil law or just criminal law? Let's examine each of these. Is criminal justice reform a bi-directional term? That means, can the affirmative topically increase or decrease policing? Can they reduce or lengthen sentences? Can changing to forensic science topically use more of these technologies or fewer of them? While nearly all AFs are likely to reform criminal justice in ways that reduce policing or sentencing or change forensic science to make it more evenly applied or fair, there's a debate to be had about whether a tricky AF could go the opposite direction. For example, an AF could increase the number of crimes eligible for the death penalty and argue that it's an effective deterrent against those crimes. That means the negative would have to prepare to debate both the Ban the Death Penalty Act and the Increase the Death Penalty Act. Negative teams debating against these types of acts are likely to employ definitions like this one. This would exclude acts that increase incarceration, for example. And I think they're likely to be successful. Either way, I don't think this is going to be a significant set of affirmative cases. The second question is, does the word reform include abolition? That means, can the affirmative, for example, abolish policing or end all sentencing for a particular crime, effectively legalizing it? Or does reform, in this case, mean a more moderate approach? The negative would love it if reform excludes abolition, both because this would limit out a number of proposals being debated in society at the moment, and because it would give the negative clear core ground in the form of the abolition critique. This will be discussed in detail in future videos and activities, but the main idea is that if the affirmative is limited to tweaking the current system, the negative would have ground to argue that only radical elimination of the system can succeed. Here's a card the negative might read to say that reforms must be limited in scope. And here's a card the affirmative can read to say that reform includes abolishing the issue altogether. Overall, I'd say that current sets of evidence make this a pretty debatable proposition and a useful argument for the negative to prepare, especially if they're interested in going for abolition critique arguments. The final question is, does criminal justice reform include civil law or just criminal law? The U.S. legal system has two main types of law, civil and criminal. This could be a whole separate lecture, and perhaps it will be, but civil law generally deals with disputes between two non-governmental agencies while well, criminal law is about offenses against the government. So something like a custody or contract dispute between two civilians is civil law, while things like assault or burglary are criminal law. Violations of criminal law often result in incarceration, while violations of civil law are more about restitution, paying a financial penalty, or ordering a change in behavior. This intersects this year's debate topic because the phrase criminal justice reform might mean only reforming criminal law or it might be a larger term used to encompass both criminal and civil offenses. Interestingly, U.S. immigration law is technically civil law rather than criminal. The penalty is supposed to be deportation or removal, not incarceration, although in reality it's a lot more complicated. An AF that wants to change immigration law, therefore, will need to demonstrate that something like the actions of Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, does qualify as policing under criminal justice reform. Here's an example of a card the negative could use to limit the affirmative to solely criminal cases. The term in the United States is useful to have in the resolution to prevent people from reading international acts like Afghanistan policing or sentencing at Guantanamo Bay. The phrase, criminal justice reform, is also modified and thus limited in a second way, by the prepositional phrase, in one or more of the following, and the list that concludes the resolution. In this case, in one or more of the following means that the criminal justice reform enacted can't be any reform, but it must be a forensic science, policing, and or sentencing reform. Let's look at each of these terms and what they're likely to mean this year. There are a lot of definitions of forensic science, but it generally means scientific principles in criminal justice, and usually refers to collection and analysis of evidence. This is the CSI area of the topic. 
and asked in this area might be about things like DNA, fingerprinting, and some science-based surveillance techniques. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of controversy about this term, but we'll see. The second area is policing. At its most basic, policing means actions done by police, and policing reform means changes to the practices that police engage in. This raises an important question about the actor. What are police in the context of policing and policing reform? Does police mean only state and local cops? Or can it include military officers, private security guards, or other federal agencies involved in enforcing laws, like the CIA or TSA? Anyone who has been following the news can appreciate this question. When President Trump threatened to call in the army against domestic protesters, is that policing and can the, topic, the affirmative topically ban it? Here's a card the negative might read to argue that military actors are not part of policing. And here are cards that say it's about the action, not the actor. Those types of apps are topical. The final word in the resolution is sentencing. A criminal sentence is the punishment for a crime. Sentencing reform often means reducing confinement, like incarceration. It may also include changing parole, house arrest, or other types of punishments imposed on those convicted of a crime. For example, eliminating mandatory minimum laws that require a particular length of a prison term would be a form of criminal justice reform in the area of sentencing. Two questions that debaters will have to answer in the area of sentencing are, first, does sentencing include the conditions while a person is serving their sentence? That will determine whether the topic includes prison reforms like eliminating solitary confinement or increasing access to education. Second, does sentencing reform include eliminating the sentence altogether for a particular crime, thus legalizing that issue? This relates to the earlier question about whether reform includes abolition, and it will determine whether acts like legalizing certain type of drugs are topical, for example. In both cases, the negative will want to argue that sentencing means the process of establishing a punishment for a crime, rather than the details of the prison itself or legalizing things that are currently illegal. In addition to the reform versus abolition card we looked at earlier, there are other cards in the topicality file to assist the negative in making both of these arguments, like this one. This has been just a brief overview of the words in the resolution and how they may be debated this year. You will have a number of additional discussions and lab activities to practice debating these issues. Good luck, and I hope you enjoyed debating the 2020-2021 criminal justice reform topic.